Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to talk about loop diuretics, specifically furosemide. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let's get into it. Alright Ninja Nerds, let's talk about furosemide. So furosemide along with terosemide and bumetanide are a medication that fall into the same class. Today for this lecture we're just going to specifically focus on furosemide. But all of these three medications fall into the same class, and what class is that? That is a loop diuretic. What does that mean? What does loop diuretic mean? Loop diuretic, let's break it down. Loop is for specifically the loop of Henle, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And diuretic is a word that we use in the medical field, diuresis, or to produce water, right? Specifically, when we produce water, it's called urine. So we have a loop diuretic or a loop of Henle producing water. So this medication in the medical field can also be referred to as Lasix. And when we give Lasix, we're essentially trying to draw out fluid from our patient. So let's think about why or who we'd be giving this medication to. The indications here we're talking about, we're going to be giving them to patients that have maybe too much fluid or too much volume, right? So the first thing is hypertension, specifically uncontrolled hypertension. So we have a patient who is having issues with their high blood pressure, normal hypertensive medications aren't working, we're going to be giving them possibly Lasix. What's that going to do? It's going to decrease the volume, so maybe hopefully control that high blood pressure. What else? Right here we have a little kidney that's got a little ouchy mark on it. That's for anyone who has some type of kidney injury. Why would we give somebody who has some sort of kidney injury Lasix or furosemide. That's because their kidney function might not be superb or where we want it to be, so we're going to give them a medication that's going to help coax it along and work and improve that kidney function. What else is going on? How do we get more fluid in the body and how are we going to get that out? By giving them Lasix. Somebody who has heart failure, we know as Ninja Nerds there is two sides of the heart and there's two ways that the heart when it does go into failure we can have fluid, excess fluid in our body. One of those is by this image right here we know that as bilateral peripheral edema, right? So we have bilateral peripheral edema. So when the heart is not working correctly, it's not able to pump out that excess fluid, filter it out of our body, and we have this dependent edema in our lower legs. What else is going on if we have heart failure? We have this, fluid in our lungs. What do we call that? We call that pulmonary edema. Right? There's one other symptom that we can find, excess fluid in the body, and that's right here. What do we call excess fluid in the stomach area? We call that ascites. So we have a patient with excess fluid in their stomach, in their lungs, in their legs. They're having excess fluid that's maybe causing them uncontrolled hypertension, and then we also have a kidney injury. We're giving them all of this medication to hopefully draw that fluid out. So what is the mechanism of action? What is the purpose of giving someone Lasix? It's to increase excretion of what? What are we going to be excreting? Sodium, potassium, and chloride. And we know as Ninja Nerds, when we increase excretion of sodium, potassium, and chloride, specifically sodium, what always follows sodium? Water. So we talk about these, this increased excretion. We talk about getting this fluid off the body. Let's talk quick about how this all happens in the nephron. Up here on the board, we have a nephron. Let's go through really quickly and just identify some of the key structures here. So up here, we have our glomerulus. We have our proximal convoluted tubule. We have our loop of Henle. We have our distal convoluted tubule, and then down here we have our collecting duct, right? So when our body has electrolytes or something or solutes that it wants to get rid of, and it starts going through the nephron, trickling through, down into our loop of Henle, all the way through into our collecting duct, eventually comes out in our urine, right? But what happens specifically in the loop of Henle does happen everywhere, but specifically in the loop of Henle is there are some solutes and electrolytes that go out, and then water follow, follows, and some that come back in. And we're going to zoom in on a spot right here, which is this right here. So we have cells 
we're inside of the loop of Henle right here. And in here we have our cells. Imagine this is a big tube. And we're going to be inside here talking about how we filtrate out and in. So remember, we have sodium, potassium, and chloride. And we want to get them out. But the way we do that is we use these co-transporters right here, which use active transport to push these out. So when we push out sodium, potassium, and chloride out of the cell, back into the blood, back into the rest of the body, we are using energy, and we're using active transport. And when we do that, what follows sodium? You know, what's the one thing that's just obsessed with sodium and just follows it around the body? We know that that's H2O, right? So water also gets transported out. So now we've removed sodium, potassium, and chloride, and water from the urine, from the filtration in the nephron, back into the body, and back into the, the rest of the blood system, right? But when we take Lasix, what does Lasix do? Lasix says, no, no, no. You are not doing that. You're not transporting out sodium, potassium, and chloride. So now, those three are still in the nephron, right? Still trickling through all the way down. So now we still have sodium, potassium, and chloride in the body that maybe might not have gotten out or might have gotten out before, but now it hasn't. So as it trickles through, we start creating urine, urine that is rich in sodium, potassium, and chloride. However, because we have water, because water says, oh, I'm just obsessed with sodium and I'm going to follow it everywhere, all of this water also follows. So as we increase our water output, or our diurese, we are able to draw fluid off the body. So this is our urine, right? So we have urine, it's increasing our output, which is great, this is what we want. Our patient has so much fluid, and we're trying to draw all this fluid out because we are blocking the reabsorption of sodium, potassium, and chloride, and we're pushing that back out in the urine, water's gonna follow, and now we have large outputs of urine. Great, we're diuresing. The problem is here, though, when we start diuresing, we need to keep an eye on what's going on with our patient. So we're gonna give them a medication, and the first thing we need to know is, how is this medication going to affect them? What's going on? Do they have an allergy to sulfa? Do they have an allergy to Lasix? Okay, or do they have any other contraindications? Do they take other medications that might not work with this? Once we check that all out, we're gonna say, all right, we're giving them a medication. Is it oral or IV? When we do give them a medication, we gotta think about the onset. Oral is typically one hour. So you're gonna go in, you're gonna say, hello, Mr. Weasley, I'm gonna be giving you this medication. It's gonna make you urinate. It's an oral medication, so you may not feel like you have to pee for maybe an hour or so, but then once that medication kicks in, you may want this urinal at bedside because you're gonna be getting up a lot. If you're giving it an IV, if it's something a little more severe, a little more acute, we need to get this fluid off immediately, you're gonna give them IV. Why IV? Because that onset is five minutes. Five minutes. So you give a patient a medication, you give them Lasix through the IV, five minutes later they might be urinating already. So what are some things you might want to be thinking of? Are they gonna stay nice and dry? Are they able to tell me if they're wet? Are they able to urinate safely, get to the bathroom? And the last thing is, do they need some type of intervention that I can do? Some type of Foley, a pure wick, a urinal at bedside. So we gave them medication, we know that it's gonna be starting either an hour or five minutes, and now let's see what side effects or nursing considerations we can give them to help them get better. What are the side effects of Lasix? Let's talk about it. So we know the mechanism of action is to excrete and increase diuresis and get some of this fluid off the body. So when you're thinking about side effects, think about urinating a lot or fluid going out of the body or loss of fluid. So what are some things that that's gonna look like? The first thing is going to be hypotension. Let's write that here, right? Hypotension. Does that make sense? Yeah, we're drawing off fluid. We're even giving this medication to possibly treat some type of hypertension. So because of that, this patient may have, you know, we might overdo it. We might give them a little too much Lasix and now they're excreting a little too much fluid, a little too much volume, and now they're gonna be hypotensive. So we wanna keep that in mind. We also, want to think about, okay, they're excreting a lot of urine, right? So we have an increase of urine output. So 
they might be a little bit dry, right? What are some signs of someone being dry? One of those is a dry mouth, right? Or a cracked tongue. So you see this tongue with all those cracks? It's like a desert in there. It's so dry. They're so thirsty. They're going to be asking you, nurse, can I have a drink? Nurse, can I have a drink? And you're going to have to be a little strict and tell them, we're trying to get fluid off of you. Give you a little bit, but I can't give you a lot. So they're going to have a dry mouth. You want to check for some other signs of dehydration. What would be another sign? Maybe some type of tenting, right? Or right on the sternum or on the fingertip or on the back of the finger, right? Making them look dry. If you're giving them this fluid, you want to keep an, a note of their ear, specifically if they have any ringing in the ear or tinnitus. All right, tinnitus is the sound for ringing in, in the or is the name for ringing in the ear. So when a patient is on Lasix, keep an eye on them. Tell them, hey, just let me know if you have any ringing in the ear because I got to keep an eye on that for you. And then we want to think about when we're giving a patient some type of medication that's pulling things out of the body, right? So picture your body like a, a train, right? A train's got a lot of cars in it. So when we are taking out a lot of those passengers, we're taking out that sodium, we're taking out that potassium, we're taking out that chloride. Now we have open seats on the train, right? And those open seats like to get filled up by other solutes and other elements. One of those is uric acid, right? Someone says, ah, I don't know, my big toe is really hurting. That's a sign of gout. So sometimes this can cause gout flare-ups or even gout in somebody that doesn't have it before. So that train car might be taken up by our uric acid, calling gout. It might also be taken up by sugar, right? This is a piece of candy here. All right, so if the sugar is going really high in the blood, right, what do we call that? Hyperglycemia. And the last, or the other thing is too, lithium. This is really important. Take a nice note of lithium. This is where NCLEX likes to talk about a little bit. When you're giving a patient, again, a medication that's pulling those passengers out of their car, it's making their sodium go down, it's making their potassium go down, it's making their chloride go down. If they take lithium, it may also increase the lithium toxicity. So keep a note. We'll talk about another video about lithium toxicity, but right now, just keep an eye on what that would be and what's going on. And the last thing is here, we're excreting a lot of potassium out, so they might be hypokalemic. And what does that mean? They have low potassium. Why is that important? You as a nurse know hypokalemia may cause arrhythmias in the heart, so we're gonna to wanna to keep eye, your eyes on their telemetry, keep an eye on their heart. So we know that some of the side effects are low uh, uh, blood pressure, a dry mouth, they're having low fluid in the body, they may have this hyperglycemia, this gout. All of these things are telling you what you should probably do as a nurse to keep an eye on this patient. So let's talk about some of the interventions. The first things here, we have a cup of coffee or water or a drink, any IV fluids, and then we have a urinal. We wanna keep an eye on their eyes and O's, right? Why? When we're giving someone a uh, diuretic, we want to make sure that we're diuresing them or they're having a good output. So typically, their I and O should be equivalent or even more output than input so that we are diuresing them correctly and they're getting rid of some of that fluid on the body. So we're keeping an eye on their eyes and nose. What else are we doing? We're also gonna keep an eye on their kidney function, specifically the renal panel. And what are the two tests that are really important in the renal panel? You know, it's a BUN and the creatinine, right? We're checking on that kidney function and we're making sure the kidneys are working great. They're not too angry at the Lasix. They're not too fluid overloaded and we're just not too dry. And we're just keeping an eye, making sure that the function's looking great. And if there is any severe changes, we're letting the provider know. What else are we gonna do? We're talking about eyes and nose, right? Patient's got to do intake and output. So they may be on a fluid restriction. And with that fluid restriction, they may also be on a sodium restriction, right? Okay. Now, this doesn't mean they can't have sodium at all or they can't have fluid at all. They just have to keep a regulation or on the amount that they're going to be taking in because we don't want to have them have too much salt because remember, what happens with salt? Water follows it. So if we have too much sodium in the body, then we have too much fluid in the body, so I'm gonna keep an eye on that. So we're restricting their fluid, we're restricting their sodium, 
What else are we gonna be keeping an eye on? We wanna make sure that we're getting daily weights on our patient. Why? Why is a daily weight important? Okay. You wanna make sure you tell the patient that if they are going home on the medication, that they need to keep an eye on their weights. They wanna take their weights daily, okay? And the NCLEX likes to make sure we have a little indicator of three pounds in one day. They should tell their doctor, okay? So make sure you keep that in mind. So we're keeping an eye on all their fluid, keeping an eye on their weight, watching their renal panel. There's some other things that are going on. Because they're losing their fluid, right, one of the side effects is low blood pressure, right? So it could be hypotension. Specifically, the type of hypotension that when you change positions, you can get really dizzy or really unstable. What's that called? They're called orthostatics. Right, so orthostatic hypotension, or when patient is changing positions, they can get low blood pressure. So you wanna tell them, hey, you wanna maybe move positions from sitting to standing or lying to standing a little slower than normal until your body starts getting adjusted to what's going on. Why is that important? Why do you wanna tell them about hypertension, specifically the orthostatics? It's because some patients forget, right? And then that increases your fall risk. And there's two, reason, two reasons why the falls can be increased. One is for that orthostatic hypertension, hypotension. The other is what? They're peeing, right? So they're going to the bathroom, they're urinating a lot. So they have that nocturia. And they may get up to go to the bathroom at night. A little disoriented, a little tired, not really opening their eyes, can't really walk. Maybe they walk with a walker or a cane and they're gonna have an increase for a fall. So what is one thing you can do as the nurse? Tell the patient education, all right? Or give them the medication when? In the morning. Make sure we give them the medication in the morning. So take it in the morning. That way, you get to pee all day long. Another thing we're gonna be doing, checking our patient. Checking the kidney function, checking the eyes and nose. We wanna make sure that we are listening to their lungs. Why? They had all this Pulmonary edema, remember, all this fluid. So you wanna make sure you're listening to their lungs. Checking their lung sounds, making sure they don't sound more wet, but they are starting to sound a little better, a little more clear. And everything that goes along with the lung sounds, you can always check their pulse ox and their respiratory rate. But this is one of the key indicators that maybe they're fluid overloaded. And the last thing, we already talked about this before, when the patient is on a diuretic and they are excreting a lot of those elements out, specifically potassium, we wanna make sure that we have them on telemetry, all right? Especially for the first 24 to 48 hours, making sure that we are able to keep an eye on their potassium, okay? Making sure it's not going too low. Because it is going too low, like we talked about earlier, a side effect of it is hypokalemia. We can give it back to them either an IV or oral potassium. All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video, we talked about ferrosamide. I hope it made sense. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, until next time.